Welcome. If you're new here, thanks for watching Zigzag Sailing, where Alex and I built our own catamaran for four years and finally were able to enjoy the fruits of our labor. I'm Katie. I'm Alex. In this episode, we're going to talk about um, our origin story, how we came up with the idea to build a Tiki 30, and more about the building site. Met each other at, at a music festival in New Year's Eve of all times, too. Oh, yeah. Meet. Then the rest is kind of history. I put my arm around him and uh, we danced the night away. At that time, I had already bought this boat monohull Bristol 32 in St. John and was feeling kind of okay about it. I wasn't feeling great about that boat on my own like it was in 1976 I want to say and it just wasn't like what I thought and then when Katie came to visit in March like we met in December 31st and she came three months later in March to visit we stayed one night on the boat and she loved it but she also didn't like how much it was like rolling around but she was like oh my god we're on the water it's yeah it was so my first great. night ever on a sailboat we ended up selling that vessel to our good friend and captain uh named jasper he's in, uh, captain jasper yeah he's and he um is seen in the videos of our sea trials so if you watch those videos he went on the first three sails with us in general i was like i love tiny living i rent tiny houses whenever i like travel or do airbnbs um do airstreams rent uh, vans drive up and down california mm -hmm. so we have done a lot of those things in, in october of 2019 we uh, both flew to miami stayed in an Airstream. We uh, got a 40-foot shipping container and uh, went to the wood supplier. Yep. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of footage from the very beginning, which was like putting together the pieces and the building plans posted on the wall in the living room, the stack of plywood that was in our living room for like more than a year. <laughs> but even before we bought the wood and the building plans, we were thinking about buying a production catamaran. Oh yeah, and Alex was like, I can build, I can buy building plans and I can build us a catamaran. And at first it was like, what the heck? But when you build a boat, yeah. the, your spirit is imparted into it. And you won't totally get that true. with yeah. any other boat. You're never going to get that from somebody else building your boat. You're always, you're always going to have some kind of complaint about how your manufacturer built your boat and you're always going to nitpick at these little things but it really like made us patient and helped us like prepare for this lifestyle over the four years we were living in a pop-up camper um in his parents front yard or i guess side yard for and, a year and a half yeah and we started building half of the boat in there we built one half of the boat the other half of the boat then we built the beams and we built the cockpit and the mast and everything fell into place after that. Alex says we, but I didn't do much. I did a handful of sanding, did a handful of painting. I kind of put my input in there. But um, in all these photos, you're gonna see from the beginning sequence uh, of the build to the very last part. So, yeah. The first videos that we have of the building process are when the boat is already like sort of put together like we put the lower hull sides together and then we built it up from the lower hull sides so the beginning of the video is like the inside of each cabin before it was like sealed up with a roof and a deck and this is just raw plywood before I had even epoxied it or a lot of the components are fiberglass in the inside as well and then we poured foam into the very bow compartment and we poured foam into the very stern compartment and uh, yeah most of the stuff as you can see the whole boat fully opened up and the original like process of putting the deck down with the clamps and so we're experimenting with a little um, bit of you'll see the carbon, carbon fiber, fiber on the roof of the, um, in the roof the cabin as well um, in the rudders and the t 
tabbing on the cockpit table. The hardest part for me, I think, conceptually, was flipping each hull over. So you build them upright, starting from the lower hull sides, and then you add the upper hull side and the cabin sides. And then you have to flip the whole hull over to do the bottom. And that's where Katie wanted to start sanding with me as we were like fiberglassing the bottom. You have to, you know, drape the fiberglass over the bottom. And we put like four, five, six layers of, of glass over the whole bottom and then fared it all out. Um, Lots of sanding during that stage. Oh yeah, doing the fairing and then painting. Eventually, Alex did apply a coat of priming or bottom paint as well. Um, we chose yellow, but we will most likely have to change that color eventually. It was really hard to get. We kind of didn't understand bottom paint at the time. Right before you go in, bottom paint likes to be like wet, but serendipitously, we got the proper bottom paint that can dry out for longer periods of time and then you just sand it down a little bit and add another coat to it it's no big deal but some bottom paints are like you really have to um just do it three days maximum before you go in the water to see more shots of the cockpit floor so um this is the beginning stages of the plywood floor yeah the the floor is a layer of plywood then a layer of foam and then a layer of plywood so it's a plywood foam sandwich floor um, and then we built the mast after we completed the cockpit we started in on building the mast and uh, why did you decide to build the mast out of wood instead of wood? that's what's in the building plans <laughs> yeah. they said to build it out of wood if you want to do it cheaply you can do it in in Douglas fir which is what we did the whole boat out of Douglas fir if you want to do it lighter a little bit more expensive, you can choose yellow cedar or Sitka spruce. It's absolutely the most expensive wood right now. Aircraft quality Sitka spruce is what we got. And it's amazing that that kind of a classification still exists, like aircraft Sitka spruce. There was only a handful of planes ever built out of wood, but right, this is the most technical thing. Even though everything's a straight piece of wood, you gotta keep it straight and you gotta glue everything up nicely. Everything has to be absolutely perfect because this is something that you don't want to fall on your head while you're sailing. Yeah. Um, this, so I took a lot of time to do yeah, that. This process definitely took over a month or so. Yeah. Alex is also doing deliveries at the time and uh, he would spend just one day just planing all of the stringers, is hand, what you call them? Hand planing the uh, strakes, I guess is how you call on a mast. Because there's four sides and those are called the strakes. So each, there's four sides that have to be planed into a circle. Made it all nice and round. Yep, painted it with epoxy paint. And then we put a layer of glass over the whole thing. I don't know if that's correct, but we did. And I reinforced the very top of the mast where the hounds are that hold up the shrouds with a few layers of carbon fiber. He started to apply like the rigging as well. Obviously it wasn't like the final rig, but um, kind of just splicing the Dyneema, yeah. making the fittings. Yeah, the everything's way. Dyneema. We spliced Dyneema rigging for the whole thing, which I had already practiced. Definitely, if you want to watch us put up the mast, check out the boat launch video. You can oh, see, man, yeah. yeah, with the crane, like them lifting up the mast, and then Alex tight, like tightening the stringers. Can you call them shrouds? The shrouds. You can see how experienced I am, but uh, that was probably the most nerve-wracking. Alex bit all of his nails off that day. I, I filmed everything in slow motion so we took up all the storage space on the camera. I, eventually Alex did a lot of paint. Um, even my mom helped paint a little bit of the triangles on the side. Mm. Uh, Quite a bit actually. Like we did one entire side of the boat, the, the multicolored triangles. Yeah. You'll see the cockpit table with that gorgeous piece of mahogany in the center. Um, we have a photo of the raw piece in there and um, yeah, it kind of skips a little bit of the painting part in us installing the trampoline. Oh yeah, we didn't get a lot of footage 
Honestly, we jump around a lot in our yeah. footage taking, and it's just like all of a sudden the boat is painted and put together. Yeah, I do want to talk about like the seats that we're sitting on. Alex like hand wove the seats out of what? Polyester webbing. Yeah. Polyester doesn't stretch, so everything on the whole boat, even the lashings, is polyester. It just, um, my hand sewed everything, it took forever. Oh yeah, I would stand underneath the cockpit passing him. Um, the needle back and forth, and we'd pass the needle back and forth as we're sewing the, the like, <laughs> webbing back and forth. Yeah. Instead of using metal, we chose to use a lot of wooden pieces, um, including Purple Heart. We integrated Purple Heart in our anchor chocks and in our chain plates, which are dead eyes adapted from the Pahi 52 design. I think it's Pahi 52 design for their triangular chain plates. If you do ever want to modify your Tiki from stainless steel, do that. Each one of our cleats on every one of our beams is a very dense hardwood as well with bronze bolts. The whole thing is bronze. Oh yeah, and Alex uh, was really active on the... No, the Warren Builders Facebook yeah. page, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, That's where we got the design for the Bimini, actually. Yeah, um, Alex saw a photo of someone in the UK. I don't know where it was. I think yeah. it's Tahiti. Yeah, and he didn't ask for specifications, kind of just saw what they did on the side of the cockpit floor and uh, used Sapelli. Um, it's Douglas fur wrapped in glass, um, hollow sections. Going back and thinking about the building process right now while we're sitting in St. Martin after doing Wild. such a hard sail yeah. up here from St. John, thinking that we might never even make it here. And we didn't quit even though we wanted to quit yeah. and turn around and go back downwind to St. John. We just persevered and did a 40 hour sail to St. Martin. Yeah. That's all you can do is just keep persevering until you're where you want to be. I see so many people quit. Don't ever quit. Told just you. keep going. Yeah. I almost quit so many times and I wasn't even building the boat. I wasn't doing the hard part, but, um, be patient with yourself. Give yourself the time. Learn how to rest. Yeah. Not but. quit. We're gonna go get gelato. Cause we deserve it. Um, <laughs> we've got a, a hot day today and uh, we've been wanting to release this video for a while. So thank you so much for watching until the end. And uh, definitely check out our Patreon if you haven't subscribed. Totally do that. Um, we really, enjoy this process. I really enjoy sharing for our family's sake and yeah. it's really really awesome. Yeah. If not for anybody else, for our families and for us to look back at later. Yeah. This whole journey that we do. Yeah, so stay tuned. We're gonna be releasing videos on a more consistent basis as we have more time on our hands and it's really enjoyable for me to document and share all of our journeys as well as, I don't know, the hardships. If you have any specific questions about the build. Definitely shoot us a message, hit us in the comments. Uh, we'll try to answer everything as best as we can. Document, just document what you're doing, otherwise nobody will believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Pick cert didn't happen. But thank you guys again, we appreciate it. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks for watching. Thanks. Realize